So guys, today we're going to be doing a field test slash review of the Campfire Piston. Now before we get started and before we jump into this field test review, uh, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome Alaskan content like this. So like I said, today we're going to be talking about this Campfire Fire Piston and it's made by campfire.com. I'll have a link in the description below to the particular website where I would got this one. But you guys have probably been noticing here over the past few months some fire piston related fires and hopefully you guys have enjoyed that kind of mix up. And I know fire pistons are certainly not as frequently used nowadays as they used to be, but I still really love fire pistons and I wanted to get this one and kind of show you guys how they work and how functional they can be. Because I think one of the largest, uh, one of the most unfortunate things was back in a few years ago, when, a few years ago back when fire pistons were really taking off and they were really fun and everyone loved them, uh, what really stopped them from taking off was a lot of people, even people like Nut and Fancy, who we know and love in the outdoor world, uh, they didn't properly know how to use these types of fire starting methods. And they gave fire pistons a really bad rap because they themselves in their skill were lacking. Now I'm not trying to go out and say people like Nut and Fancy are bad woodsmen because they, they're just fine and you know they know how to use ferro rods, you know they know how to you know how to start fires using ferro rods, lighters, matches, stuff like that. And for the most part, that's really all you need to do. Like, that's all you need to know how to start fires with. But if you want to practice and begin to get more proficient at different methods, fire pistons are a really great way. And I think, like I said, a lot of people, they just didn't know how to use them. And they really bashed the system because of their own personal shortcomings. So today I'm also going to go over kind of just what I mean by this and kind of show you guys how to effectively start a fire with a fire piston. Also let you guys know with the packaging on this uh, fire piston, it didn't come with a whole lot, but like most fire pistons, you obviously need an O-ring for this setup. So this does come with a bag of four O-rings and what I did for this, uh, sis or for this bag is I just took a little bit of petroleum jelly and I threw it inside here, like inside the bag. And what that did was basically now these fire pistons, they sit in a petroleum jelly coated land. So whenever I pull one out to start a fire or to put with the fire piston, I know it'll have a proper amount of lubrication and will work just fine. So that was something I did. It also came with another small bag, if I can find it here, of some, this looks like charred cotton balls or essentially like a charred cotton kind of really fibrous material. So it came with both of these and this stuff works really well for the fire piston, but I also tend to use a lot of char cloth. So basically, and as I'm rolling in footage here, what you want to do with the fire piston and to get a fire started with a fire piston. So guys, did a quick showing there of how to use this thing, but like I was saying, and to pretty much add commentary as I'm rolling the footage in, uh, basically a lot, what a lot of people get wrong with fire pistons is they're just too nice with them. And I think there's a little, maybe some trepidation, I don't know what everyone's reasoning is for this, but I think there's a little bit of trepidation in wanting to or not wanting to break your fire piston. But honestly, I've never seen, especially aluminum and illuminated, aluminum, if I can speak tonight, aluminum shafted uh, fire piston ever break in the piston itself. And so there's really not that much fear, and I've never had that much fear with this one in particular uh, about breaking it. But I think that might be, that's the most probable cause I can think. But ultimately, when I watch a lot of people, including Nut and Fancy's technique when he's doing fire piston work, the thing is, and where most people go wrong with fire pistons, is that they aren't striking them hard enough. If you guys noticed there, uh, I did some light strikes. You can see I was striking moderately hard. Uh, but I wasn't getting any results. And then I started to strike really hard, like you should with these things. And that's where you can actually, if you strike hard enough, get a one strike light. I think I've shown that a few times here. 
uh, throughout the whole test footage and I've certainly done it a handful of times on and off footage I've gotten one hit strikes with these things so ultimately there's a lot of people who don't know what they're doing with fire pistons and I think that those handfuls of people have really given fire pistons a bad rap but it's primarily the user's fault not so much a faulty fire piston because like this fire piston done properly and struck hard enough this thing easily lights fires and like I said you do have to strike it pretty or easily it starts and gets embers going now like I said you do have to strike pretty forcefully and I would say never be afraid that you're going to break the fire piston especially with this campfire fire piston I have not found it to be weak at all and like I said I've smacked this thing actually so hard that when I was pulling back like I would smack and then pull back really fast the piston would actually like fly out of the cylinder and so I've struck this thing purposely way harder than you actually need to but every time I've struck it very hard to get fires and that is simply what you have to do with a fire piston if you want to use a fire piston properly and get start get fire started reliably with these things you have to just strike them very hard so that's the primary thing I think most people get misconstrued on a fire piston and why a lot of people fail when it comes to fire pistons but overall I've actually had really great luck and I've even got my girlfriend Ashley to start fires with this very reliably not quite one strike yet but she can reliably start embers and start fire from ember with this piston and what's really impressive is she had an absolutely no background with fire pistons that was the first time I introduced her to a fire piston so you know I took her from absolutely knowing nothing about fire pistons to being able to reliably get an ember out of a fire piston so I have to say this fire piston at least the campfire fire piston is a very reliable one and I've struck it like I said way harder than you actually need to but I wanted to make sure and test this thing really test it to make sure and as far as striking technique goes you guys have probably noticed a consistency throughout all my footage and that is that I prefer to strike it on my knee and that doesn't really hurt for me this strike area here is large enough that it doesn't really dig or hurt my knee slash thigh I've never had any issue with that and neither has anyone else that's practiced my technique so I think that's pretty much how I do it I personally am not as you guys can see I'm not like the most buff person so I can't like slam it like this and I think some people they try and like slam it like this and like I said, I'm just not super buff in the bicep area strong enough but not super strong so I cannot reliably get a, a piston spark that way or a piston uh, strike that's hard enough to start something just by slamming it like that so pretty much what I do as I showed you guys is I just start it on the end of the or right where the right where the o-ring kind of meets and interlinks and so I give myself as much space as possible and then pretty much I just slam down as hard as I can onto my knee or like thigh area and then just pull up real fast so basically if this is my knee down here I basically strike like this and then I hold this I strike like this and then I pull this back up and allow this to breathe. It's really important that you get the cylinder out of the way as fast as possible because there's not much air in the cylinder and the ember immediately starts burning and needs air. So if you're not fast enough, you will uh, choke the ember. So anyways guys, that's kind of the technicalities and the starting of it. Like I said, the campfire fire piston is really reliable. I've really enjoyed using it and I'm gonna continue to use it for years to come. So anyways guys, hopefully this inspires you to take another look at fire pistons. They really are a great method. And like I said, the link to this one will be in the description below. And anyways guys, that's all for now. Hopefully you enjoy this review and I'm out.